In 10.7, we're going to learn about inscribed and circumscribed polygons. Oh, yeah. Now, students will be able to apply the definitions and properties of these inscribed and circumscribed polygons. To be an inscribed polygon, all the vertices of the polygon have to be on the circle. All right? And that means that the circle is circumscribed about the polygon. And the polygon is inscribed in the circle. Oh, yes. Circumscribed polygons are basically outside of the circle, but each one of the sides are tangent to the circle. Remember, tangent is touching at one point. So circumscribed polygon is outside, and inscribed polygon is inside. That's mainly important if you're ever drawing when you're given a problem. They might say that this polygon is inscribed or that it's circumscribed. And you need to know what that looks like. Here's a fun problem. Now we're given two angles of this inscribed polygon, and more specifically it's an inscribed quadrilateral. And we're asked to find the other two missing angles. If I look at this, I know that the arc across from 67 degrees, that on angle, is double 67, so it's 134. If that's 134, then I know this right here is 226. How do I know that? If I add those two together, that gives me 360. That's an entire circle. Okay, well, if, 220, if that's 226, now the on angle, which is this angle that intercepts that arc, is going to be half of that, so it's 113. So that's the measure of angle D. Measure of angle D equals 113. Now I need to do the same thing to find the measure of angle C. If this right here is 208, then we have this one right here, which is 152, because 360 minus 208 gives me 152. And now half of that would be this on angle, which is 76. All right, so my measure of angle C equals 76. Uh, now, when I'm looking at this, I'm noticing something. 104, 76, that adds up to 180. 113, 67, that also adds to 180. Is there something about opposite angles in a quadrilateral that have been inscribed in a circle and being supplementary? I wonder if there's anything to do with that. Oh, man. Inscribe circle theorem. Throw it in your toolbox, meaning highlight it, star it, underline it, whatever. Maybe some glitter on it. If a quadrilateral is inscribed in a circle, the opposite angles are supplementary. Oh, yeah. And guess what? Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, Mr. Allen, I want to make sure that we prove this before we use it. And guess what? I like to prove it. Prove it. Oh, yeah. Let's prove this thing. So it says, if a quadrilateral is inscribed in a circle, the opposite angles are supplementary. And this is also on page 487 in your book. So if you ever lose your notes, you can always go back to your book. Boom, it's right there. Oh, yes. All right, so let's see here. So I'm going to follow exactly how your book has this proof with the circle O with inscribed quadrilateral a, B, C, D. Now, based on what we're given, say we have this quadrilateral that's been inscribed, and we want to prove that A and C are supplementary, B and D are supplementary. Let's just see how this works. It's more of like an algebraic type of proof. Well, I know that the measure of angle A is one half of the arc that it intercepts. And I also know that the measure of angle C is equal to the half of the arc that it intercepts. And I used three points of the arc because I don't know if it's more or less than 180, so I'm just going to use three just to be safe. That way everybody knows exactly where I'm going. If I'm talking about this arc, B, A, D, everybody knows I'm going here. Because if I said B, D, you might think it's this way, you might think it's this way, you don't know. So we'll be specific with three points. All right, so those two, and let's look at this. We have B, A, D, that's the second one that we did. We have the first one, B, CD, well, that goes all the way around the circle, doesn't it? So let's think about what that means. Well, if I add these two arcs together, then I'm going to be left with this part right here. 
the measure of arc BCD, this one right here, plus the measure of arc BAD, and that gives me 360 degrees. Hmm. So let's backtrack a little bit with what I wrote down here. One half of this arc plus one half of this arc, that's measure of arc, or of angle A and measure of angle C, right? I can just substitute that. That's no big deal. I took out my GCF one half and I put that out front to put these two arcs together. And I know that this one plus this one is going to add up to 360. I don't know what each one is, but I do know that these two will add up to 360, as I can clearly see here with the two arcs that I drew on, that it completes the circle. So one half of 360 gives me 180, and bada boom, bada bing. I know that the two angles, the opposite angles, A and C, are supplementary. And the same proof would hold true for B and D. You can prove it as well. So here's a fun little story. There used to be this plain old parallelogram named Rex Tangle. And Rex was always trying to fit in. Into the circle, that is. And one day he awoke. He had found that he had straightened himself out and was finally able to inscribe himself. Now, what had that plain old parallelogram turned himself into? Let's think for a second. If I have a circle here, and I know that my parallelogram, the opposite sides are parallel. So I've got opposite sides parallel. I also know that my opposite angles are congruent, right? In a parallelogram, my opposite angles are congruent. Let's just focus on two of those right now. Well, if those two angles are congruent, but I also know that opposite angles are supplementary. If they're congruent and supplementary, what do they have to be? They have to be right angles. So what I have here, now I don't know that all four sides are congruent. I just know my opposite sides are congruent. Therefore, I have a rectangle. Ooh, do you see what we did there? We call them rectangle, but it's really a rectangle. So if I have a parallelogram that's inscribed in a circle, I know that it has to be a rectangle. So here we have our theorem. If a parallelogram is inscribed in a circle, it must be a rectangle. Well, why is that important? So what? Okay, fine. If it's a parallelogram, if it tells me it's a parallelogram, I can assume that it's a rectangle too. That seems dumb. Well, what if I just need to prove that it's a rectangle, but as long as I prove that I have a parallelogram, which can be easier to prove than it's a rectangle, then I know that if it's inscribed and it's a parallelogram, then it is a rectangle. So that is, it will help me in some proofs if I'm trying to prove that something is a rectangle. All right, in this problem, we're given an inscribed quadrilateral, and we want to find the value of x. Well, I'm given, let's see here, angle B is 132, so this is 132, and then I have angle ADC, which is x squared minus 2x. Well, what do I know about these two angles? They're not congruent, but they are supplementary. So I'm going to have x squared minus 2x, then I can add the 132, and I know that these two added together will give me 180. Now, when I see that x squared, I know that I'm in for some factoring, most likely, or quadratic formula, your choice. I'm going to do x squared minus 2x, and then I have minus 48 when I subtract that 180 over. From here, I can just go ahead and factor. I'm going to have x, well, what multiplies to negative 48 and adds to negative 2? Negative 8 and 6, minus 8, x plus 6, and I'm going to solve for x. x equals 8 and x equals negative 6. Awesome. Cool. Great. Grand. Wonderful. Well, do both of these work? If I plug in 8 here, I get 64 minus 16. That's positive. If I plug in negative 6 here, I get 36 plus 12. That works as well. So both of these answers actually work in this case. The negative one does work. I know a lot of times the negative doesn't work, but sometimes they do both work. Sometimes the negative works and the positive doesn't. You've got to check it back in the original problem. So here we have parallelogram A, B, C, D is inscribed in a circle. We want to draw the figure. Well, we know that if it's inscribed in the circle, if a parallelogram is inscribed in a circle, then we know that it's a rectangle. Oh, yeah, from our our good old rectangle story. Now it says, what is the measure of angle A? Well, if this is A, B, C, D, I know that the measure of angle A, really the measure of any of these angles, is 90. It's a right angle. It says, what's true about the intersection of the diagonals? Well, my intersection of my diagonals is at the center. 
Oh, yeah, that's right. They intersect at the center. Woo! All right, we're given this quadrilateral. A, B, C, D is inscribed in circle O. We want to prove that angle B is congruent to angle A, D, E. So I'm going to do that in blue here. I want to prove that this is these two are congruent. So the blue is what I want to prove congruent. Now let's, let's look at the rest of this. All I'm given is that it's inscribed in the circle, but that is a very powerful statement. If it's inscribed in the circle, I know that my two opposite angles, angle B and angle A, D, C, are supplementary. Okay, so let's write those couple things down. So I've got my given, and I have that angle B is supplementary to angle A, D, C. Because if a quad is inscribed in a circle, then the opposite angles are supplementary. Okay, now it's time to jump back into the time machine and see if we can get angle A, B, C and angle A, D, E to be congruent. Well, I know that angle A, B, C is supplementary to angle A, D, C. I can also see that this angle here, A, D, E, is supplementary to angle A, D, C. So this angle and this angle are both supplementary to the same angle, which means they are congruent. And there's our shorthand reason. Angles submitted to the same angle are congruent. Man, it's been a while since we used that one. But it feels good to, you know, go back. Go back in time and realize how awesome that stuff is. All right, there's your homework. Love our quiz over 10, 6, and 10, 7. Manana.